And we're Spielmill. And this is our next episode of the Shelf, Shelf of Shameful, Shameful Opportunity. <laughs> I messed that up, but that's okay. <laughs> Shelf of Shameful Opportunity, that's what yes, it is. Yes, that is what it is. I always want to say the Shelf of Shameful Responsibility, <laughs> which is a whole other shelf. It is, it is. We don't We don't talk about that. No, we don't. It's very shameful. No one talks about that shelf outside of that shelf. Yeah, for it's sure. Like Fight Club. <laughs> it is. So how many did we do this time? Five games. Five games, okay. Five games, and we were just ready to do another video, so we thought we'd do it. Yep. Um, we are diving into... Uwe Palooza. So that's going to affect the next Shelf of Shameful Opportunity because our next big video about it will probably be the Uwe Palooza video that we'll do. We'll probably do like yeah. a top 10 or something. Yeah. Well, we'll definitely do a top 10. Okay. All right. We'll definitely do a top 10. Oh, we do one for Feldfest yeah. and Uwe deserves the same treatment as Stefan. Yeah. All white men are created equal. Should be treated equal. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, anyway. Anyway. <laughs> so. I'm just rambling. Our first game is. Earth. Earth. Earth, 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 Earth. Yeah, this game made a big splash at it the end of 2023. Did. Everybody was talking about I it. I think. At some point. We took a while to get to it. Yeah, everybody was talking about it. It was like the game of the year for folks. Mm -hmm. um, well, it was a, they said it was a something killer. I can't remember what. Wingspan? Maybe. I think some people thought it was a wingspan killer because it's Whatever. about nature. It's like nothing like wingspan. But yeah. anyway. <laughs> yeah, so we finally got this to the table and we really enjoyed it. Yeah, we did. We really enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I don't think that, um, I think it always hurts my evaluation of a game when everybody's talking about how great it is. And I mean, everybody. Well, it builds on my expectations. Yeah, it does. And um, I thought it was very good and I really enjoyed it. But um, I don't know if it's in my top hundred, and it, it probably will be. But but I think it's going to be in the in the higher, lower, yeah. whatever, like in the eighties or nineties. I don't yeah. think it's going to be kind much of, higher than that. Kind of the same for me. Like um, I thought it was really nice. There are some things I really liked about it. Yeah. I love the sort of constant dopamine. Uh, you get from the follow actions like i love a game with a follow action yeah so briefly you know when it's your turn you pick one of i think four different actions and uh you do the main action and then you uh and your whoever else is playing does like a minor action that's similar right but then your cards have powers on them related to each uh, of those main actions and so you'll get all of those little actions so let's say you do the yellow action you got four cards with the yellow power you'll get to do all those as well right. which is a lot of fun i mean it means that there's like constantly stuff happening even yep. if you're not the, not the main player are you laughing at me no <laughs> okay <laughs> what would i do that i don't know because sometimes i i would only laugh with you dear okay great are you laughing with me no okay i'm not laughing i'm just smiling you are smiling um, yeah, so I just, I really like that about it. Uh, there's a lot to keep track of though, is the one thing I will say. Yeah. I think the thing for me, the negative was that I found it like a little bit of information overload. Mm -hmm. You, uh, you ideally want to have a decent amount of cards in your hand, but it was hard to keep track of all the cards in your hand. Um, because you want to be able to compass cards when you have the opportunity to compass cards. You want to be able to play mm -hmm. cards into your tableau tabloid tableau when you want to play cards in your tableau um so you want to be able to do those things but in order to do that you need to have a certain amount of cards in your hands yeah um and but that was like information overload for me i just had trouble keeping track of all that now what i did i found that you did keep track of your action your follow actions i thought when you did your red actions you knew what red actions yeah you had that wasn't that kind of thing yeah. that worked really well um i think the scoring conditions were a bit they were a lot. Um, There's a lot of them. Playing on the table, it was easier to keep track of. I'm, I've been playing it on BGA, and I'm just losing track of them. There's there's literally, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven or more scoring conditions that you're trying to keep track of and build your tableau according to. Um, and that just can be a little bit overwhelming. Well, playing online, the information overload of all the cards in your hand and then all the different scoring conditions... And remembering that when you're taking a turn, if you're not doing real time, taking a turn, you know, once every day. And yeah. I can't really do real time. It's just too hard on me. So, um, 
it just doesn't work for me that well. I don't think I think I'll play occasional game just to keep the rules and the gameplay on top so that between physical gameplays I'm keeping the rules yeah. on top of my brain. But I don't think I'm gonna play a lot of it on BGA. Yeah, I I I think I might be winnowing down my games after this. Um just because it is there's too much too You playing multiple right now? I think it'd be really yeah. hard to play multiple. <laughs> Extra hard. Like. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's why. <laughs> Anyways, that's Earth. I think, again, I think we really liked it. We're definitely keeping yep. it. Um, uh, and yeah. it, it was a little bit of a victim of some of the early hype. Yes, fits of the hype. And then I like the components. The components were very nice. With the one complaint that some of the growth tokens didn't fit within each other, which seemed like a quality control issue. Um, but we, were, we liked it enough that we did back the, we played it while it was the expansion was on kickstarter yep. we back the expansion yep so don't get us wrong we liked it yeah definitely yeah <laughs> so all right so that's earth what's next all right next up i have pirate party now pirate party is a little card game where you're just basically making sets and it was not very great no it was kind of broken i thought um you the one thing I liked about it is they're female pirates, right? But the it, was, great. it was like draw a card and then either make a set or do nothing. So you're mm -hmm. just just drawing cards trying to get a set. Um some of the sets, if you like you could make a you had to have a pirate, a uh not a mate, but a like a a, de a crew member and then mm -hmm. one other card in order to make a set. But let's say you made a set out of crew members of one color. Yeah. You, the, you would you would have a, a captain in your hand that would now be useless. Um, you you, mean if, oh yeah, if you, you yeah, I yeah. Know you, mean, yeah. you could you could make a set that then meant that you had a useless card in your hand, which I mean I guess is always the case. But then there were negatives at the end of the game. Yeah. There were mermaids which were wild, which you could use to offset yeah. that a little bit. So there, it wasn't. I would say I have played much worse games. Yeah. But I will say that it just the decision space in it wasn't really great. It was also very take thatty. And there was a lot of take that. The adventure cards in particular. Every were single all like take that. steal somebody's card. Yeah. I remember I got really, really upset. You very graciously did not steal the card. <laughs> and I, I also did steal a card that was worth a lot of points. Yeah, you did. You did. <laughs> as long as you didn't take my mermaid. I took your booty. Yeah, you did take took my booty. Your booty. Well, it was a fifty took point your booty. card. Yeah. So um, I don't know. I I don't think we'll be playing this again. We wanted to really like it because it was by women designers and all female pirates, but just did not hit for yeah, us. Like I said, it's just a light card game. So depending on your, your group or whatever, it might work, but it's a very light card game with a very limited decision space. So just know that going in. Make sense? Yep. Sorry, did I talk over you? No, I was trying to cycle you on. Oh. <laughs> Because we're doing this in the evening. Yeah, sorry. We're it's been a long day. We played multiple games of Aeon's End earlier. That was fun. A lot of gardening, and it's I'm pretty tired. All right. So next up, we have a legacy game we're playing through. We're only part way through, of course, but we thought we'd share our thoughts. And mm -hmm. since that it's a new game to us, and that's Sagrada Artisans. Yeah, this is uh, we're having some fun with this one. Yeah, this is great. Um, really enjoying it. We like Sagrada. Uh, in general mm -hmm. um, and the artisans is um, adding a nice level of complexity to it some of the games are really brain burning like yeah. just trying to, to to meet all the conditions and think of the puzzle uh, I think it, there's been a couple times where I thought it was just a little too much being added in at once mm -hmm. um, it could have been more incremental but I thought it was I mean it's enjoyable it's just you know and I like all the changes and the rewards that you get after an episode and stuff like that yeah and really love the coloring. Yeah, one of the things I love about it, I was going to mention that, right? Is so you color. It's it's you're coloring in your windows, right? You've got mm -hmm. a set of colored pencils, and the dice are, are you know the colors of the window, um, much like in regular Sagrada. But instead of you just putting the dice on your board, you're coloring in, right? And mm -hmm. Um, each page also then has like a coloring book style yeah. uh, uh, layout to it. And so every game I'm coloring in between turns and I'm just like, I'm, I'm, it's a coloring book. Yeah. I am really enjoying that. It, I mean, it's just, it's not part of the game, but it's just such a nice added element, a visual yeah. element to it that I'm loving. I mean, this game, like that kind of coloring is just great for your mental health, I think. And like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know, it's very I don't know, calming. 
Yeah. And and just an enjoyable experience. The other thing I'll say is that so for this this game so far, the loser got some really nice powers. <laughs> really good powers. Yeah. So it really balances out. Yeah. It um, really balances out. We're trading back and forth who's mm -hmm. winning. So really, far. honestly, probably because you get such good tools if you lose that the next game, mm -hmm. you are much more likely to win. But then whoever lost the, uh, that game then gets the tools. So yeah. I like, I really like that. I hate a game where the the leader just gets further and further ahead. And I found that that does happen sometimes with, yeah. with competitive legacy games. So this, this one does seem to be doing a nice job of balancing that. Yeah, we'll see. We haven't played through the whole thing, so we'll see it goes to the end. Because whenever... My island, I thought, did a good job up until a point. Yes. And then it kind of didn't. And then and it fell was, off, yeah. That was weird. And that was, yeah. And I didn't like that because I was the loser. <laughs> and I got just just battered about by the end of the game because there was no catch-up mechanism or no, like, balancing. So, oh, But it's very pretty. It's very fun. The mechanisms, like Sagrada, you can just pick up and play mm -hmm. very quickly and easily. Yeah. Um, like I said, I thought... Early on, it added a little too much too quick for me. I don't know why, but it, but it after the few games, it be, it became comes easy to keep track of all the things. Yeah, and I really do like the legacy game where you're putting stickers yeah. on the board and it's kind of growing and changing as you go. And it's fun. the stickers make it like it gets prettier. In this case, we're building a cathedral and yeah. it's getting built up as we go. And I just. I'm really enjoying this one. This is nice. Yep. And so we try to keep that spoiler free from anything that would spoil it for you, I guess. Yeah, I think most of that's something you would hear on yeah. here anywhere. So, but that's Sagrada Artisans, and we do really enjoy it. So, yes. thumbs up. All right. Okay, next up we have a little button shy game that we got to the table called Tornado Chase. Yeah, this was, the rules on this were a bit tricky as sometimes is the case the rules are actually time. terrible you <laughs> cannot learn the game from the rules and i went on to bgg and there's like one thread in the forum for this game in bgg and it's i cannot learn the game from the rules <laughs> <laughs> so and there is a good post in there which helped us learn the game but we still have questions and so we're gonna i'm gonna go into the button shy uh discord and Try to figure out some of those answers. Yeah. Because I I just have questions about, like, some of the rules. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I do, too. And they're kind of critical in how the game works. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it was, like, a really, really vital question yeah. as to what you were supposed to do when your meeple sort of went off the end of the track. So yeah, do they go all the way back to the beginning, but you don't move the beginning card to the end until the tornado goes off the track? No one... I don't know. We we were just unsure what yeah. to do, but I think we sort of figured out what a house rule um, at least for it. Yeah. But uh, it's a decent game. I would I, say it's not a great game. But yeah, I kind of liked. I kind of like the theme. So you're mm -hmm. ch you're literally chasing a tornado. There's a dice that's the tornado, yeah. and you've got a row of cards. And the tornado is sort of working its way up the card, and then you've got different crew members, each of which lets you do like do something, chase the tornado, or drop a weather sensor. And the closer you get, the more points you get. And it's kind of a cute little theme. There's not a lot of games out there about it's this dice theme. Drafting it's got dice drafting. Dice drafting. So I think the bones are there for for a decent light quick and very portable game like this yeah. is a great one you could if you were traveling you could do the solo so you could throw it yeah. in your bag and take it with you solo or if you were going you know out to a bar with somebody it would be a very portable game and so for that kind of thing i thought it was fine yeah and it's very quick so if yeah. you it would be a great travel game in that respect yeah and i i'm fascinated by tornado so i just i kind of you do have to provide your own components. Yes, that's so right. So we did that. Um, and it had minimal take that, which I liked. Yes, uh, exactly. Yeah. If there's one thing about button shine games is sometimes they have a lot of take that, and this one didn't. So that's yeah, good. Definitely. So yeah, so that's Tornado Chase. All right. Last but not least. Um, so this is a game called Warehouse 51, which you didn't know the show. It's based on a TV show called Warehouse 51, which I watched. It's kind of a terrible show, admittedly. But I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't know. I mean, is it also a comic or something? I don't know. I'm not sure. But this was this was a pleasant surprise. Mm -hmm. uh, we did not go into it thinking much up. Think thinking expectations were yeah. low. And it's a bidding game, an auction game, which we don't generally love. 
but this was actually really good. You've got five, four or five different color cards and um, at the end of their, their relics mm -hmm. and basically whoever's a lead player turns one over and then you bid. It's not, and it's either a public bid or a hidden, uh, hidden bid. Um, and you're trying to, at the end of the game, have the most cards in that color, um, or, or the highest score, right? So if you had two threes and I had three ones, you would win, right? So you're trying to get the highest score, um, in that color. The trick is that the cards themselves have, um, powers, some of them negative, some of them positive, and then there's these, um, counterfeit cards around that you don't know until the end of the game some of the items are going to be counterfeit and aren't yeah. going to count for for a bidding game uh i i really like this yeah. i thought it worked really well and i should note that we play this at two player it's technically a three player and up game mm -hmm. um and we still enjoyed it with a yeah. we used a, a little two player. player variant that was on oh. board game game oh yeah i know i know i know um what was really neat about it is so if if you win the auction mm -hmm. the money goes to the person goes clockwise around the table right mm -hmm. so you actually have a little bit of a disincentive from just like blowing out the bed and mm -hmm. you know saying take all my money i need that card because the other player is going to get all that money yep. and so that was really interesting i ended up with a giant pile of money in front of me because the the dummy player you know kept winning bids and yep. handing me all the coins and more than once i thought you know what i really want that card but if i win i'm going to be giving jane like five gold bars or coins or whatever she they are not give me enough ingots. Mm -mm. i was like no i'm not going to do that you can have the card so, and then saved it for when it was one that like I really critically needed to, to be a big scorer. I don't think I won, but. Yeah. Uh -huh. So the two player variant on BGG I thought was okay. Mm -hmm. But this is a game that I kind of wish it came with like a, a 10 card Automa system. Yeah. That dictated the choices of the third dummy player a little better. Yeah. yeah. I think that a good 10 card, 12 card Automa could be really nicely done. Yeah, yeah. This was just roll a dice and they either up to the bid or or not. An interesting element of the game was that uh, you're bidding on these artifacts and you win an artifact and there's four different colors and you're trying to win each color because whoever gets the most in the color gets the most gets the most points, second most gets second most points and third most gets nothing. And uh, the one challenge that we ran into was there's, there's these counterfeit cards. So some of the relics you get are worthless, but you don't know that until the end of the game. But there's like an artifact that lets you peek at one and there's other artifacts that will say this like can never be cut counterfeit and stuff like that. And so there's ways to mitigate against that. Yeah. It was very, it was kind of like mitigating dice, but it was very interesting. Yeah, yeah, oh, d definitely very clever. Oh, and it, of course it was designed by um, uh, Bruno, Bruno Fiduti. Fiduti. Yeah, so it had a good designer on there, which... yeah. Makes sense. Yes. It's a good design. So we did have some expectation going in. It wasn't going to be absolute, absolutely horrible. But you never know. I mean, look at Kinesia. He's got a couple of stinkers out there. So um, There's also a lo loan mechanism in the game that we didn't use. But that I think with more players in particular could be quite powerful. Yeah. Yeah. So. Definitely. So, yeah. So that was Warehouse 51. Real, right. real surprise. So that's our five games. Uh that are new to us on the shelf of shameful opportunity. Yes. Um, what have you guys been playing? Getting yeah. anything new off the shelf recently? Yeah, and have you played any of these games? Let us know in the comments. And uh, it's nice to see your faces again, although we don't really see them kind of technically. <laughs> Where are you looking? I don't know. I haven't. I can see you. <laughs> All right. Remember. Every day of your game. Is a holiday. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.